appreciate. Now that you're all quiet, let me ask you, are you having fun? Wait a minute, are you having fun? Okay, all righty. Are you learning something? I heard three people say. Well, let me ask you the question Abdul Aziz asked me. Did you learn that one thing yet? Have you learned it? Okay, they're getting there. I have this feeling that they're feeding you so well here that you're kind of lulled into this state of, of pleasure. And um, I don't know about any of you. Did anybody enjoy the food last night at the reception? Uh, that was... That was, that was amazing. And um, anyway, so we're, we're all going home carrying more with us than we brought. Um, this is a real pleasure today for the program. Um, to me, a number of people have asked, you know, what was the idea behind a conference like this? And to me, um, I put it in very simple terms, to learn, to share and to celebrate. And we've been doing a lot of the first two and now's a chance for us to really celebrate as well. And I think the thing that makes this program special is we're celebrating on a global scale. There is so much that we have in our industry that has come forward as a result of new ideas, innovation and technology and we see that in every one of our organizations. But sometimes it's really worth standing back and just recognizing some of those who really shine above the crowd. And we're fortunate today to be able to do that in partnership with the International Road Federation that is, has been such a strong partnership with us in putting this conference together. Today's award ceremonies, I'm going to be inviting up here in just a minute, Peter Boyd, who is the chairman of IRF Washington. And Mr. Boyd is also the chairman of the advisory and of the advisory of Delkin. And uh, I think one thing that we appreciate a great deal is having the private sector as a part of this conference and bringing that perspective to us as well. With Peter is going to be Pat Stanky, who has been our partner in putting this together for months now. Um, I have to thank Peter Ruane, who brought Pat over to us in a meeting and introduced us and said, I think we can make something happen here, and I think it has. He is the Director General and the Chief Executive Officer of IRF. And through that, Pat really manages the operations and the day-to-day -day activities in the Washington Base Center. So if you would, please join me in welcoming Peter Boyd and Pat Stanky to the podium. Thank you, Joe. Well, that's uh, very kind for those kind words. Um, just a couple of thoughts on IRF. Uh, we have been in existence since 1948. Uh, we have representation in over 90 countries. We have program centers, as we mentioned, in Washington, in Brussels, and in Geneva. Uh, we're a multipartite organization. We draw membership from contractors, consultants, equipment suppliers, academics, administrators, and we have a fair representation from the political decision makers as well who are involved in roads and infrastructure. We are a nonprofit advocacy group. We are advocating for better roads. Our simplest statement is better roads, a better world. In parts of the world, such as Africa and developing areas, that's putting in place a fundamental road network. In more advanced areas, such as Europe, we're advocating for a level playing field in terms of policy, in terms of taxation, and in terms of subsidies. Um, I think in, in total, one of the things that IRF does that we're so proud of is training. We've had an emphasis on training for many years. Uh, the International Road Educational Foundation 
has funded over a thousand scholarships that have brought students from around the world to be educated mainly in U.S. universities. And in fact, I'm very pleased to say that we have with us today one of the graduates of that system, our first fellowship graduate from Iraq. And I'd like to recognize him because frankly, it was a little difficult for him to get here. Zahar Yusuf, Zahar, could you stand and be recognized please from Iraq? Thanks, Zahar. One, as I say, one of a thousand graduates of educational training here in the U.S. We're very proud of. And I'd also like to ask the members from the IRF, we are having our board of directors meeting here and our educational foundation directors meeting immediately following. So I'd like to ask the representatives who are here from IRF to stand and be recognized as well. There we are. And you'll recognize, of course, we have very strong U.S. representation with Pete Ruane, and Tony Kane, and the consulting industry. So we're, uh, we're well, we're, we are well embedded within your organizations. Now, I'd like to turn to the awards themselves. I do want to thank the Federal Highway Administration for the opportunity to be here, first of all, and secondly, for this format, to publicize to what, a, what to us and to all of you is very important. The fundamental contributions to a better world and a better society and a better environment that are created by road builders, road suppliers, road innovators, environmentalists, landscape architects. We established this program in the year 2000 for that specific pr purpose, to highlight the good achievements, the fine achievements of the road industry in total. So I'm going to start today we're recognizing the outstanding achievements in four separate categories. There's actually nine award categories, but four of them are only four of them are being presented today. We're recognizing construction methodology, environmental mitigation, program management, and quality management. The first category is construction methodology, and I'm going to refer to my notes here. This category was designed to recognize significant achievements in construction that enhance the quality, timeliness, cost effectiveness, safety, and or efficiency of a roadway development project. The winner of the 2006 Global Road Achievement Award for Construction Methodology is Antigo Construction Incorporated for the Kandahar Herat Highway in Afghanistan. I can mess up the technology just standing here. Really? <laughs> As part of the ongoing U.S. effort to rebuild Afghanistan's infrastructure, the Lewis Berger Group was contracted to repave the Kandahar Herat Highway. Berger rec recommended Antigua Construction as the subcontractor to repave the highway as they specialize in concrete pavement recycling. The 442-kilometer road was built in the mid-1960s using precast concrete panels. By 2003, this highway had deteriorated badly due to extensive cracking of panels, displacement of joints, and uplift from flooding, stemming from years of neglect and conflict. Given the remote, dangerous location and harsh environment, the paving of the KH Highway is considered one of the most significant most difficult and the largest continuous concrete rubbleization asphalt overlay ever constructed. And Antigo completed the job at a true cost savings of over $22 million. Let me repeat that, a true cost saving of over $22 million. I gather we've had the presentation. <laughs> And 
that presentation went to George Shinners, president and CEO of Antigo Construction, and to, and to Kent Landy, vice president and chief engineer of Lewis Berger. Well done, gentlemen. Thank you. The second award to be presented today is in the environmental mitigation category. This category recognizes public and private organizations that show outstanding progress in protecting and or enhancing the natural environment in the planning, design, and or construction of road development projects. The winner of the 2006 Global Road Achievement Award for Environmental Mitigation is, now I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to jumpstart anything again, okay? <laughs> so we'll just skip that part. The company, uh, well, Derek Eretz, for the Cross Israel Highway was committed to implementing an ecological and green approach in the development and rehabilitation of the Cross Israeli Highway. This approach was demonstrated on the very first day of construction and continued throughout the project. With an environment first mentality, natural forests, agricultural fields, streams, and wildlife along the highway were preserved. The project positive impact on the appearance of the landscape raised the bar in assessing infrastructure projects in the country and has set new standards in all aspects of development, rehabilitation, and environmental mitigation. It's my pleasure to present the award for environmental mitigation to Ms. Tamar Darrell Fosfeld of the Israeli Association of Landscape Architects. The third award to be presented today is in the program management category. The growing demand for new and refurbished infrastructure is leading to partnerships between government and the private sector to manage this work through dedicated program management offices. This category recognizes companies and projects. The winner of the 2006 Global Road Achievement Award for program management is Parsons for their innovative design build approach to re rehabilitate urban roads. Congratulations. Okay. Gentlemen, let me describe your project for the, for the audience. In 2001, the District of Columbia Department of Transportation initiated a series of traditional design bid-build contracts for six of the city's eight wards. In this process, designers prepared multiple construction contract documents for award to the lowest qualified bidders. However, for wards three and four, an innovative procurement process was initiated that resulted in significant time savings and cost efficiency. Instead of the traditional process, DDOT decided to pursue design build contracts. As part of a special experimental program, the district used an innovative federal procurement process. DDOT entered into a partnership with FHA, and since the district did not have a procurement legislation for design build contracts, FHWA served as the administrator for a contract awarded in 2002 to the joint venture Parsons and Fort Myers Construction Corporation. This was a first for a transportation project in the district, and furthermore, they knew that few agencies, if any, had used design build for a large number of small projects. This unique design build contract was led by the Pars Parsons, the designers. Parsons finished ahead of schedule. Way to go, Tom. Under budget and pleased thousands of DC residents, which for those of us who have done business in Washington know is no easy achievement. <laughs> the program now serves as a model for the district government's own design build. So let's, I'm pleased to present the award to Tom Popolsky, Senior Vice President, and Prakash Patel, the project manager. Congratulations. 
The fourth and final award to be presented today is in the quality management category. This category recognizes organizations that have developed and implemented a quality management system to maximize stakeholder satisfaction at the lowest overall cost to the organization. The winner of the 2006 Global Road Achievement Award for Quality Management is Delcan for the T-Rex Transportation Expansion Project, Quality Oversight Program in Denver, Colorado. Congratulations. You'll recognize a bit of nepotism here, but I assure you the judging criteria are completely objective. <laughs> As many transportation agencies are discovering, design-build contracting is both an effective and efficient way of getting certain large complex projects completed. However, in switching to a design-build contract, as you know, the delivery method means that the DOT's traditional role of quality assurance and control reverts to the contractor, with the DOT's new emphasis shifting to quality oversight. During the project's period of performance, DELCAN assisted the Colorado DOT and the T-REX program management teams in transitioning into this new role of quality oversight and in establishing an effective program to ensure quality objectives were met. During the course of the project, the oversight team used new processes to record literally tens of thousands of quality observations. The DELCAN system uses statistical analysis and computer-based records management. The non-conformances, major and minor, are immediately communicated to the contractor for action and are then tracked for closure. Based on the significant leap forward in the area of quality oversight and the impressive results achieved on T-REX, this same approach has now been replicated on other large, complex transportation projects. Unfortunately, the award recipient, uh, Brian Stearman, who's president of Infrastructure Business National Operations for DELCAN, was unable to make it here today, and uh, IRF is accepting it on his behalf, and we will pass the award on to Brian at the first convenient opportunity. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes our awards presentation. Thank you again, Peter. Um, it's always a joy to see. I, I'll, I'll tell you the projects you selected too. These are ones that we only hear about and to actually see the people who have been part of these is a, it's an incredible accomplishment. Um, we also have some awards uh, to be presented from the National LTAP Association and presenting those is Bruce Drews, current president of the association. Bruce? In the LTAP community, without the volunteerism, the self or servant leadership of most of the organization, NLTAP would not exist. We require or we need that servant leadership to take and propel the program and the centers into the, the next step or the next part of our organization. In the last few years, we have taken and put together a number of our work groups, and one work group was tasked with taking a look at the role and the responsibility of the national program and looking at a method to award those individuals that have done ex ex above and beyond service to the national program. And as part of that award, we are now taking and recognizing three recipients of what we're calling the National Program Achievement Award. These three individuals, the entire LTAP program will recognize and understand the reason that they've been awarded this uh, new award from the program. 
and we're going to award them a plaque, and the plaque says, in recognition of the altruistic dedication, servant leadership, and effectiveness in the development and support of both the local and national LTAP TTAP programs. Our first award recipient, in 2002, we went to his state and had our conference up in Vermont. At that conference, he set up, that was our 20th year anniversary, and he, the individual and his staff set up a history of the LTAP program. And if you really take a look back into that LTAP program, you will see his name scattered as the secretary, as the president of NL Tapa, as one of the founding fathers of NL Tapa. And this individual has selfishly worked towards the promotion of LTAP and NL Tapa. He has worked on a number of different committees. And the last committee that I have worked, had the honor and the pleasure to work with him on was the roles and responsibilities. And he worked selfishly dedicating a lot of time, energy, and funding to take and work on that committee. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Hank Lambert up to accept this award. Thank you so much, uh, Bruce. It's a, a real privilege to accept an award from colleagues, many of whom I've worked with over the years, and uh, uh, many, uh, many new people. Uh, my claim to fame is really to outlast all my colleagues. Uh, I was one of the, uh, f uh, f the first directors of the first 10 uh, centers, and it's been a, it's been a wonderful ride. Uh, but like, um, an older colleague, Calvin Grayson from Kentucky, uh, once said when he was receiving an award, um, I feel like the turtle on a fence post. You know the little critter didn't get there by himself. So I'd like to say uh, thank you to my staff, Sally Colopy uh, and uh, uh, Steve Jerome and uh, Maureen Dakin and so, ma so many others and, uh, that I've worked with. Um, LTAP, uh, National LTAP is, um, and TTAP uh, is clearly on the cusp. We're uh, in the doorway uh, to something great. And uh, thank you for being a part of that, and I wish you all well. Thank you very, very much. The next individual that I'd like to introduce and uh, offer up this award to has selfishly worked towards the promotion of LTAP and NL TAPA, working through her contacts, her information, and her resources. She has selfishly worked and dedicated a lot of time towards the promotion of NL TAPA. She worked on a number of TRB committees, including the Technology Transfer Committee, chaired that committee for a number of years which required an enormous amount of time, and in her role in that, as the chair of that committee, she dedicated her mission towards promoting technology transfer. I'd like to introduce Cherie Marty. Well, this is really a privilege, and I'm not quite old enough yet to retire, unless you're giving me a message, but I'm, I'm still here in force. And I just want to say, I remember um, 14 years ago attending the Kentucky, the National LTAP um, program, our conference in Kentucky, and that was 14 years ago, and I remember 
meeting folks and hearing so much about the program and feeling a bit um, overwhelmed and realizing that I really didn't have a clue about what I was up to and all that I had before me. And, um, but quickly, it was the LTAP community that offered their time, their resources, Federal Highway, the Clearinghouse, um, LTAP center directors and staff, they were qu quickly there to help. And I realized that there were many friends that were willing to walk with me along the journey. And that program of support really grew um, back in Minnesota with the Minnesota DOT and our city and county partners uh, were just tremendous. And I just, we know that any kind of successful contribution is because of many hands, as Hank has already said. And I will say that the staff at, the, at CTS is just tremendous. And Jim Grothaus, the rest of the staff, many of you in this room I've worked with over the years, and I'm deeply grateful, my family. So I just, the bottom of my heart, just thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. Our final recipient, everybody in the LTAP community will recognize. Unfortunately, she's not going to be able to be here. She had other commitments. But the individual has selfishly worked very dedicatedly towards promoting LTAP and NLTAPA. Like Hank, she came up through the program, worked as a secretary and a president for the LTAP community. And I'm very pleased and very grateful to Maria Aldella Colson from Nevada. <laughs> Accepting the award for Maria is Lisa Cody. And she has brought a, a message from Maria. Good afternoon. Maria couldn't be here today because of some family commitments. She said to say hello to all of you. She asked me to share a few words with you on her behalf. It was 15 years ago when I first attended the first LTAP conference in Michigan. At the time, the Nevada Center was three days old. I had no idea what I was getting into, but I met lots of wonderful people who helped me and encouraged me and the last 15 years have been the best of my career. I started working when I was 17 years old, and now I'm close to retiring. Of all the jobs I ever had, none compared with being part of the LTAP program. And what makes this program so successful is people like you. I believe that this organization, everyone is a leader regardless of title. I thank you for honoring me, but I want to honor you for your caring and leadership. And I hope that for every one of you, the LTAP program is not a program. It is a family as it has been for me. Thank you. I have one more piece of information. Um, over the last year, we've had a number of LTAP uh, individuals depart the program due to retirements or due to promotions. And I felt, uh, I should say, the executive committee felt that it was important to recognize those individuals for their commitment to the LTAP program. I, we had developed a certificate of appreciation that will be sent to each one of those individuals. And the certificate says, to the member of the National LTAP TTAP Association, expresses our sincere gratitude to listing their names. We'd like to thank you for your enthusiastic support and tireless commitment to your local center and to the National Association. Those individuals, while most of them have, have departed the LTAP program, are still part of the family. And I'd like to be able to recognize them. We had approximately, well, we had 13 individuals depart the center. Thank you.
Bruce, thank you so much. And, um, and let's hear it one more time for all of our award recipients and the great honor that this is. Um, I only have one short announcement before we leave. Um, and these come to me on blue sheets. I know the difference. Um, pink cards need to say I need to go somewhere. Blue sheets need say I need to say something. So that's how they keep me straight. We're going to eat again <laughs> at 5.30. And uh, we, we try to give you at least four hours between food here. But um, actually, uh, the reception tonight um, is very special. It's a, a reception that actually was planned late in the program because we're very honored to have um, a number of special guests from the international community. And our reception tonight is truly an international reception. And actually, joining us at that will be someone who is arriving this afternoon and we aren't sure whether or not she's going to be able to be here or not. But anyway, um, we're, we're very much looking forward to all of our international guests being there. I, um, I've had the pleasure of meeting many of them uh, in the last two days. And I just say to you again that if you haven't reached out and said hello, you're missing a treasure. Um, one thing that I think is so special is that you talk for two minutes and you'll find out that half the issues you have are the same issues that everyone in the world has. And um, it's just wonderful and uh, it's wonderful to have that sharing. So again, please come this evening at 5.30. There's a lot of programs this afternoon. Enjoy them and we'll see you then. Thank you again.